Hey folks, Joseph A. Savora here, and I'm doing another movie review called The Amazing Spider-Man. It's the reboot of the Sam Raimi Spidey trilogy, such as Spider-Man's 1, 2, and 3. And this is basically a different adaptation of Spider-Man, the way the movie was supposed to be uh, written, based on the comic material. It stars Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, Rise to Fans, Dennis Lurie, Martin Sheen, Sally Field, Campbell Scott, and Bev Davis, and C. Thomas Howell. As the film begins, Peter Parker, now played by Andrew Garfield, is an outcast high schooler who has been abandoned by his original parents as a boy, leaving him to be raised by his Uncle Ben, played by Martin Sheen, and Aunt May, played by Sally Field. Like most teenagers, Peter is trying to figure out who he is and how he got to be the person he is today. Peter is also finding his way with his first high school crush, a blonde girl named Gwen Stacy, who is now played by Emma Stone. And together they struggle with love, commitment, and secrets. As Peter discovers a mysterious briefcase that belongs to his father, he begins a quest to understand his parents' disappearance leading him leading directly to Offscourt and the lab of Dr. Kirk Harners, played by Rice Advance, his father's former partner. As Spider-Man is set on a collision course with Connor's alter ego, the Lizard, Peter will make life-altering choices to use his powers and shape his destiny to become a hero to the entire city. Anyway, I really enjoy this reboot of The Amazing Spider-Man. I think, in my opinion, this was the best Spider-Man movie I've ever seen prior to the Sam Raimi trilogy. And I think it's definitely better than the third sequel. You know why? Because at least they got everything exactly right. They did not screw up Gwen Stacy's character like they did in the third movie. I, I don't know why they did that, but it was, but it didn't make any sense to me, because we all know that Gwen Stacy is Peter Parker's slash Spider-Man's girlfriend. No doubt about it. that was his first high school crush as a teenager, and it was way before Mary Jane Watson, because we all know that Gwen Stacy had been killed by the Green Goblin. And I definitely feel sorry for Peter Parker for losing his first love. So, yeah. So they definitely got everything right this time. I really enjoy Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker instead of uh, Tobey Maguire. I mean, I like Tobey Maguire too. He's a good actor. But I think Andrew Garfield definitely served his purpose to play this role. He's definitely the Peter Parker I would know. And I really enjoy Spider-Man the way it is now. Uh, it didn't have... I'm glad the CGI wasn't so bad compared to the Sam Raimi trilogy. De they definitely got better this time. And I'm glad they did. They also focused the story just right. Well, for the most part, they did. I thought Martin Sheen and Sally Field actually did a very good job playing those roles of Uncle Ben and Aunt May. Um, although, yeah, I feel sorry for Uncle Ben, too, because... He really didn't deserve to die. I know, I'm sorry I had to say that, but it's just, I gotta admit, I I sort of started feeling very teary about that, because, you know, about his death. Um, I also enjoy Rice as, as the role of Dr. Kirk Dr. Connors, and he did an amazing job. I mean, prior to the, the original actor who was going to play him, they didn't get it right either, but this time they did got it right. Um, I really enjoyed the humor into it. It was so hilarious. It was exactly what I remembered. And this is exactly the kind of reboot that they should have done in the first place. I know most people think that this was unnecessary to do a reboot, but you know what? I'm glad they did a reboot to this because 
If it wasn't for the disaster that they had for the third sequel, you just know what we're going to be dealing with nowadays. So, I really enjoy it from what they did. And I do think the director, Mark Webb, who did the film 500 Days of Summer, did a very good job directing this film. I think he deserves a medal for this. But I personally think it's one of the best um, Spider-Man movies I've seen so far. Uh, not exactly as big as as the Avengers, but it's pretty close. And I know The Dark Knight Rises came out after that. So, but I still enjoy it. So I give The Amazing Spider-Man four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.